Welcome to the daily word for the season of Epiphany. Today's reading is from the letter of James, chapter two, verses fourteen to twenty-four and twenty-six. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, "Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your food," and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say. You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I, by my works, will show you my faith. You believe that God is one; you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith without works is barren? Was not our ancestors Abraham justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was brought to completion by the works. Thus, the scripture was fulfilled that says, "Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness." And he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. This is the word of the Lord. Active public faith. Some years back, a friend asked me what name I'd like to suggest for her second son. Without hesitation, I suggested James, and since the boy was due some time before Christmas, I suggested another name, Emmanuel. She and her husband must have liked my suggestions, as they had the boy baptized James Emmanuel. I liked James, as he was very much down to earth and very aware of the goings on in the society they dwelt in. He has a keen eyes of the complex knot of oppression affecting his immediate audience. Furthermore. It is within that social context that he challenges his readers to put their faith into action. For most of us, faith is a private matter. Even a simple saying of grace before meal in a restaurant is almost taboo for some of us. But for James, faith is not a private matter. For him, faith is not a private matter. Devoid of any social significance, our text for today is a moral challenge. It is not a rhetorical question. It tries to goad the readers to act in accordance with one's faith, between what one professes to believe and what one does, and by expressing his challenge in such a way that he emphasized the close relationship. We must have with each other. James was subtly emphasizing that women are the most vulnerable and needs utmost protection and defense. I like this definition of what Christian life is. Christian life is what we do after we say we believe in God. That is powerful, challenging, dynamic, involved. Transformative and transforming, it is actually paraphrasing our text. I believe that behind James's challenge 
is his faithfulness to Jesus' command to love one another, which is radical and is governed by the principle of justice. Justice, because to put his commandments into practice, demands that we suffer with those who suffer, not because Christians are masochistic, not because we enjoy inflicting pain on ourselves, but rather because we are bound and must be intentional to seek an end to the causes of their suffering. Thus it means being involved in the life and struggles of the least of Jesus' brothers and sisters, the orphans, the widows, the hungry and the thirsty, the naked and the sick, the strangers, in other words, with the vulnerable. Our text this morning, therefore, challenges the status quo, especially if the status quo is full of injustice and violence. If in the light of situations of injustice and violence, all we as Christians could do is to say, we will pray for you, even if it is within our power to affect some changes, to make their lives and our society a better place to live in, then our prayers and praises are empty and meaningless. We will pray for you becomes an empty platitude. Our faith becomes a mockery of who we claim to believe in. God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now reflect on the text. The Hong Kong Sing Kong Hoi is already involved in so many social welfare programs and activities funded by government. Must the members themselves be directly involved in some advocacies to enhance the quality of life of the people of Hong Kong and perhaps of the world? It is said that justice is love distributed. Why do most Christians feel uneasy to speak about justice than to speak about love? Hong Kong hosts more or less 300,000 foreign domestic workers of whom probably 95% or more are women. Are we, or is the Hong Kong society, sufficiently protecting them? Let us pray with a prayer written by Janet Morley. Holy God, whose name is not honored, where the needy are not served, and the powerless are treated with contempt. May we embrace our neighbor with the same tenderness that we ourselves require, so your justice may be fulfilled in love. Through Jesus Christ. Amen.